This Week at NASA During an Earth Day visit to Goddard Space Flight Center, NASA Deputy Administrator Lori Garver received a tour of the Landsat Data Continuity Mission Control Room and was briefed on Goddard Earth Science programs. Garver also took some time to discuss the Earth science priorities of the President's fiscal year 2014 budget proposal for NASA. Four new Earth science missions in 2014 alone, including 17 operational Earth sciences missions. So this is a very robust operation focus area. NASA also celebrated Earth Day with a range of activities for travelers and visitors at DC's Union Station to help them better understand the agency's mission to sustain the planet's systems and climate. Science. NASA Administrator Charlie Very Bolden nice. and Leland Melvin, the agency's Associate Administrator for Education, were among those in attendance at this year's White House Science Fair. Part of the President's Educate to Innovate campaign, the event aims to motivate students to excel in science, technology, engineering, and math. I just had a chance to uh, see some of the outstanding exhibits uh, that uh, have been put forward by some of these amazing young people. And let me just start by saying, in my official capacity as President, uh, this stuff's really cool. NASA supports this and other events that encourage student development of STEM-related skills and the pursuit of careers that could benefit the agency, the nation, and humankind. The Near-Earth Object Camera, or NEOCAM, an infrared sensor that could improve NASA's ability to detect and track asteroids and comets, has passed a critical design test in an environment mimicking the temperatures and pressures of deep space. The postage stamp size device has greater resolution and sensitivity than previous generations of infrared sensors and could be vital to NASA's recently announced initiative to identify, capture, and relocate an asteroid closer to Earth for exploration by astronauts. More than 9,000 people in 83 cities around the world took part in the recent International Space Apps Challenge. The two-day event, sponsored by NASA and more than 300 government agencies, organizations, and academic institutions, encourages mass collaboration for development of technology to solve 58 challenges aimed at improving life on Earth and in space. Check out the nearly 800 solutions submitted at http spaceappschallenge.org. There you see uh, Progress 51 lifting off. A Russian Progress cargo craft completed its two-day journey from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan when it docked to the aft port of the International Space Station's Zvezda service module on April 26th. Uh, we have capture. On board the Progress, more than three tons of food, fuel, supplies, and experiment hardware for the Expedition 35 crew aboard the orbital laboratory. Space Shuttle astronauts Bonnie Dunbar, Kurt Brown, and Eileen Collins joined an elite group of American space heroes with their induction into the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame during a ceremony at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Brown flew six missions and commanded the STS-95 spaceflight of Senator John Glenn. Collins became the first female shuttle pilot and commander on STS-63 and STS-93, respectively. And Dunbar was a mission specialist on STS-71, the first shuttle mission to dock with a Russian space station Mir. Ames Research Center hosted a workshop to discuss the autonomous multispectral sensor, a high-resolution spectrometer recently installed on a U.S. Forest Service Cessna Citation jet. Using Ames developed technology, the AMS captures high-resolution data during forest fires, which can then be transmitted to ground disaster management investigators for analysis. During the workshop, attendees were able to get a close-up look at the aircraft and the AMS sensor. NASA's Gulfstream 3 Aerodynamics Research Aircraft has resumed a series of baseline flights in preparation for the Adaptive Compliant Trailing Edge Project, a joint NASA Air Force Research Laboratory effort. The project will evaluate shape-changing, bendable composite flaps that should reduce drag and eliminate a major source of aircraft noise during takeoff and landing, supporting NASA's goal of simultaneously reducing noise, emissions, and fuel use by future aircraft. 
The New Look Galleries of NASA Glenn's Visitor Center at the Great Lakes Science Center is launching visitors on a journey of human exploration. The center highlights the risks and triumphs of human space travel, the challenges of living and working in space, and the role of research in long duration space travel. Four, three, two, one, Pegasus is away. 10 years ago on April 28, 2003, GALAX, the Galaxy Evolution Explorer Telescope, was launched by a Pegasus rocket into low Earth orbit to conduct ultraviolet observations of galaxies across 10 billion years of cosmic history. Data from the telescope is providing clues about the evolution of galaxies and the causes of star formation, bringing us closer to understanding how galaxies like our own Milky Way were formed. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories or to follow us on YouTube, Foursquare, and other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.